really, laughing at us. really want to get this in. I think this is really important. I'm about to blow your mind, folks. I've been reading a biography written about the chairman and CEO of Fox News, Roger Ailes. While reading page 103, the hair stood up on the back of my neck. Keep in mind, this quote is from about a year ago. Mr. Ailes says, quote, Putin is angry. He thinks the United States doesn't take him seriously or treat Russia as a major player. Okay, that's fine. That's how he feels. If I were president, I'd get in a room with him and say, look, look at the slaughter going on in Syria. You can stop it. Do it, and I'll see to it that you get all the credit. I'll tell the world it was you who saved the innocent children from Syria, in Syria, from slaughter. You'll be an international hero. You'll go down in history. Hell, Putin would go to bed thinking that's not a bad offer. There will still be plenty of other issues I'd have with Russia, but instead of looking for one huge deal that settles everything, you take a piece of the problem and solve it. Give an incentive for good behavior. Show the other guy his self-interest. Everybody has an ego. Everybody needs dignity, dignity. And what does it cost? You get what you want, and you give up nothing. Bob, how many lives may have been saved if President Obama just went to Putin when Roger Israel suggested it? Well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, Roger. A year ago. I know. It, it was very precedent. I'll give you that. But, I mean, I think what he's saying here is the same thing that anybody in the diplomacy business will say is that if you can get your enemy to sit down and give them part of something uh, and get them on your side, at least for, for one issue, then that's probably a good thing. How many lives would have been saved? Uh, I'm not sure that the Putin a year ago would have, for a minute, gone and done anything with uh, Assad. I think it took this uh, bombing of the, of the sub suburbs of the Damascus threat. for it to happen. Ange? I don't think this at all prevents Assad, even, even though I doubt that he's actually going to do anything about these weapons. Like I said, they'll probably make it look like he's doing something. You can move these weapons very, very easily. Um, it's going to take a long time to actually get inspectors on the ground. It's going to be a stalemate. They'll drag it out. And, Eric, it still doesn't prevent Assad from using other more traditional ways to oppress and to hurt and to kill his people. So I, I, I still don't know what the game plan is after this. Um, your thoughts? About, do you remember about, uh, about a year ago or so the administration did a speech that um, in our foreign policy we're going to make a pivot to Asia? Uh, that is actually, they're not, being, they're not able to follow through on that. The Middle East is going to be something that they have to focus on because meanwhile in Egypt we still have the discussion of whether or not to continue to fund them. I mean, there's, there's so many other things that are happening in the Middle East that are going to take up their time that I don't think that they'll be able to make that pivot that they promised. And, and, and in the end, it surely is about Israel in, in terms of our commitment to Israel. It needs to be secure, and we need to stay there to do that. Greg, your thoughts? The, uh, two points. Uh, if Putin thinks Obama doesn't respect him, join the club. Fact is, Obama is only excited around real star power. That is Beyonce and Jay-Z. Maybe a Putin could twerk. But the bigger point is the president doesn't buy into exceptionalism, and now neither do we because we follow our leaders. Basically, he's not a leader. He's a helium balloon. And so... He did, tries to dictate answers, and the world doesn't listen. All right. We're going to have to leave it there a year ago, folks.